Hi, I'm Barry Houston Phillips. For years, on my own, I've gone into museums with a camera crew and reviewed shows, talked to curators, talked to artists, talked to people in the museum about what was going on in a particular show and exhibit at a museum at that time. Why did I do it? I, I don't know. I, I, I love interview. I love art. You put the two together and it's a natural to review the shows of museums that are in your community for the benefit of your community. Uh, some of the shows that I've done that you, you may or may not know of uh, are the Degas to Matisse show that toured the U.S. several years ago. It's the collection of Maurice Wertheim uh, out of the Harvard University Museum. Uh, Louis Kahn, the architect, his retrospective, did it in the Kimball Museum that he built as one of the quintessential pieces of American architecture of the 20th century. Sean Scully, a great artist out of New York, um, unusual man, the Catherine series, had a wonderful conversation with him. Uh, probably my favorite is the Billion Dollar Barnes Collection. It was a collection of Impressionism housed in Marion, Pennsylvania, on tour for the first time in 80 years. For me, I have a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree with design, art history, uh, a master's as well with uh, graduate studies in design and art history again and uh, was honored with an honorary doctorate of humane letters for my work in the accrediting council realm of the arts and humanities. And also, uh, I'm a two-time Emmy winner for my work as art director of the PBS series Wishbone. We adapted 51 classic novels and literature to film. And as art director, I had to be very sure that what I was doing was period correct. Say, Pride and Prejudice, what did it look like? What was the setting? I don't have photos from that era, certainly don't have videotape, but I do have the work of artists, the masters, who documented all the look of that era. I'm also a senatorial nominee for the White House Committee on the Arts and Humanities to be a personal advisor to the president about what's going on in the arts in our country. The one person I want to talk about though today, I, I want to get right to because he's the one that influenced me. He taught me to think out of the box. That's Andy Warhol. In a particular series that he did in 1963 called the Saturday Night Disaster Series, it, it, it just took me and it said, look at me. I am worth looking at, not as uh, a headline, but as something of our culture. He photographed, he took photographs of as well and silkscreen car wrecks with people hanging out, bodies, um, things that were both beautiful and horrible all at the same time. In fact, you might say that this series is the ugly Betty of its own generation. It was tabloid imagery that we now so closely associate with the 60s. Um, at the same time, he was collaborating and running around with Truman Capote who was writing M. Cold Blood. And I think somewhere they decided to get together and shock the consciousness and the social awareness of the United States and say, look at who we really are. And I think Warhol's disaster series did exactly that. It took us to a different realm visually in our culture. The Warhol Museum where these hang um, on the Allegheny River in Pittsburgh uh, houses 12,000 of the uh, Warhol originals. Uh, it's the largest comprehensive museum in the world dedicated to the work of just one artist. I want to share with you uh, just a couple of snippets of um, some of my favorite interviews and a couple of questions that uh, were really kind of fun. Sean Scully was a hard interview, but the ice broke with this one question. Tell me, I've always wanted to ask an abstract painter this question. How do you deal and what do you say to people that walk in, look at your painting, and go, I don't understand. What is it? I could do this. It depends really on how much a person wants me to help them or not help them. I was in the Dallas Museum yesterday and a young woman walked up to a Monet and she said, What's that? I could do that. <laughs> And that's Monet. I think for me as an interviewer, to ask the question that's never been asked before is the biggest thrill of all. Yeah. The descriptive adjectives that you just gave to the painting of the card players seem to be a lot of the same adjectives that describe Barnes, the man himself. Is this a direct relationship between the two? Is this coincidental? 
Now, that's a very good point. In fact, I think you're the first person to make that alignment. The man that I just interviewed, Dr. Colin Bailey, he's senior curator now at the Frick Museum in New York. But the one thing I love to do is to interview kids. You never know what they're going to say. It's crazy. What did you think of the exhibit? Great. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. What did you like? Um, the pictures and stuff and the polka dot stuff. I like those little polka dots. Cool. Rad. Bethany, what would you say is the greatest misconception mm. that possibly younger people have today about going to a museum? <laughs> well, I know a lot of my friends would say something like, oh, boring, you know, but it's really not. It's very interesting, and I think that they would enjoy it. So why a wrecking yard? Because I think Andy Warhol would think this is the greatest place on earth. You know, all the years I've been going to museums, I've really learned one thing. It's that museums really are just a place for everybody to get together and look at things. Andy Warhol, eat your heart out. Sentimental gentleman from Georgia, Georgia, gentle to the ladies all the time. When it comes to loving, he's a real professor. Yes, sir, just amazing Dixie Valentine. Oh, see those Georgia peaches hanging round him now. Cause what this baby teaches, nobody knows just how old. Oh,